Data modeling at a high level is all about an abstraction that organizes elements of data and how they relate to each other. We are all so used to spreadsheets and the way data is organized in that fashion. Who hasn't made a spreadsheet to organize their household bills or plan a trip? Think about the process you went through to create that first set of rows and columns. That is data modeling. The process of creating data models for an informational system. Data modeling can easily translate to database modeling, as this is the essential end state. Data modeling can be considered an abstract process. But as you continue the process of creating data models, you will begin modeling the data for a particular informational system. Data modeling can easily be called database modeling, as this will be your final state or the home of your data. The process of data modeling is to organize data into a database system to ensure that your data is persisted and easily usable by you and your organization. Data modeling is a process to support both your business and your user applications. Let's discuss the difference between these two needs. Let's say we owned an online store. We will need to store that data so that we can understand how much stock we sold of a particular item. This is a business process. And we'll also need to store information about our customer as they log into our website, a user application. To begin a data modeling process, the team must gather requirements from the application team, the business users, and our end users to understand that data must be retained and served to the business or the end users. First, we need to map out that our data must be stored and persisted and how that data will relate to each other. Next, we want to focus on conceptual data modeling. The process starts, our process of doing actual data modeling starts with conceptual data modeling with entity mapping. This can be done actually by hand or by using many tools to do this work. Conceptual data modeling is just as it sounds. This is mapping the concepts of the data that you have or will have. Again, think about the Excel spreadsheets you've made in the past. The moment where you jot down some notes on titles to call your columns is like conceptual data modeling. Think of this as a giant whiteboarding session with all the members of your team. The relationship between your data will be organized in this process. Think about our online store. We can imagine having a customer box connected to our sales box, connected to our inventory box. Here, when I say box, I'm really referring to like something like this. This is an entity mapping diagram. Next, we'll be doing logical data modeling. From there, logical data modeling is done where the conceptual models are mapped to logical models using the concept of tables, schemas, and columns. Now we have to start thinking more practically and move those boxes and arrows we drew on the whiteboard to tables with columns. Let's think about the box we created for our customer. Naturally, each customer table will have columns such as name, address, and phone number. From there, physical data modeling is done transforming the logical data model to the database's data definition language, or DDL to be able to create the databases, the tables, and the schemas. Now we need to start writing code. We'll be writing our DDLs to create tables in the way that the database understands. Every database does this about 99% the same, but always with a few tweaks. You'll need to Google when working with a new database. So a DDL, again, that definition is the data definition language. In this course, we're going to focus on the physical data model to create DDLs in relational and non-relational databases.